having walked through this understanding of heaven and hell, real places of eternal existence, a real judgment, um, we live in a world that wants to say there are many roads that lead to heaven, doesn't really matter which one, um, everybody goes to heaven, or nobody lives past planet Earth. There's so many voices out there. When we start to understand the reality of this, Jesus is unique in all of history. There's evidence for him that's unlike any other religious document. The miracles, the things that happened, the, the historical evidence. Um, we know that the scripture says that, that we were told to go into the world and make disciples. We were told to go into the world and, and, and share the good news. We're a light, we're a city on a hill. How does this change our life? Uh, what does it do to the way we live, what we live for when we, when we live with heaven in mind? Yeah, I mean, it makes a huge difference. Uh, think of uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, where it talks about the, uh, the uh, uh, heaven uh, and earth that now exist that will be uh, destroyed by fire. And it says in verse, um, let's see, down here in verse 10, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will pass away with a roar. The heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. The earth and all the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in terms of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved. But right when you're thinking, it's all going to be destroyed anyway, what does it matter? He says, but according to God's promise, we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, verse 14, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and to be at peace and count the patience of the Lord as salvation. In other words, we are in light of the fact that this world is passing away, but a wonderful, wonderful world redeemed by Christ, a blood-bought new universe, new heavens and new earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the universe. And then there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. That's the universe, a new redeemed universe that we're going to live in. Wow. So we are living in this in-between world between Eden and the new earth, and we're under the curse and the fall. What a sort of people ought we to be? What kind of lives ought we to live? We ought to live with a sense of where it all began and where it's all headed in the end without end because the promise of God is his children will live happily ever after. And what difference does it make in our lives today? Well, for one thing, to understand that we have not passed our peaks we do not pass our peaks in this life. I mean, in a sense, we do. It's like we go up like this. We reach a certain point. We have injuries, age, and then we start to decline. We think, I passed my peak. Yeah, but then we die, and to depart and be with Christ is better by far. For me to live as Christ and to die is gain. But that's not the end. Then comes the resurrection, even greater, where God comes down to the earth to dwell with his people for all eternity and in glorified bodies and renewed minds forever we will serve our God and work with each other and worship him. And how should that change our lives today? Well, in pretty much every way. Why would I want to do something today that is out of sync with the person God has remade me to be and who he desires to represent him accurately in this world and to serve him for all eternity and to receive from his hand rewards for having served him. It should change everything. 